you're doing it wrong. And I see it a lot. Let's talk about picking PC parts the right way. I cannot tell you how many times a year that I get people who ask me to look over their builds, just say, hey, Roby, give me some advice. What do you think of this build I put together, etc." Or I get first crack at people's potential commission builds after they have done literally hours of research and been totally surprised at the list of parts people have put together. Now, to be clear, I have literally done hundreds and hundreds of builds. And if I went back and looked at my first builds I put together, I would not be happy with them myself either. Does anyone remember the stream where I redid my first commission build? Yeah. All intake fans, good job, Roby. Yeah, what was that? I don't even know how I got that water cooler on there. And honestly, there is a lot to know in putting together a PC part picker list or a new APC builder list, and that's why we're here today. So let's walk through each of the parts of a PC and give you some high level tips so you can feel more confident when you put together your first or even your 10th PC part picker list that you aren't going to buy. But dreaming is fun, right? Now, fortunately or unfortunately for some, this is going to be a strictly gaming slash streaming rig based, which are kind of the same thing nowadays anyway. So if you are looking for like a CAD rig that you can use to build like the next Death Star, this isn't the video for you. Also, if you are a hardcore PC DIYer or devourer, then this isn't for you either. I'm not gonna try and caveat the crap out of this build, but this is for the 99% of people who just wanna build a gaming rig, set a few things in the BIOS like XMP or DOCP, maybe change pump seeds, and then enjoy the PC for what it is. If you're one of those people who are wanting to pop in here and nitpick percentage points of performance, you know what, then check out my video right here on how to start your own YouTube channel and you go at it. Now this is going to be a tips and tricks for PC part picking. I can hear that like honky tonk music playing right now, part picking. But there is also so much more for learning how to build a PC. Lucky for you, we have like a university of classes, which you can check out in the description below on choosing things like cases, airflow, AIO, fans, and so much more in terms of even setting up your PC once you're done. Plus, we have numerous step-by-step -step guides at different price points that will round out the whole process that will show you building a PC from beginning to end, step-by-step. Now, last thing, and I promise we will get to the tips ASAP, but this is going to be a lengthy video. So if you wanna to jump to certain tips and tricks, go ahead and use the timestamps integrated in the video. But we will have lots of funny bits, thanks to our awesome editors strewn throughout the video. So we will try to make this impart of invaluable knowledge as entertaining as humanly possible. Now, regardless, stay tuned until the end of the video on how you can help us and maybe win some cold hard cash in the process. But for now, sit back, grab some popcorn or kale chips if you wanna eat healthy and not taste anything, and let's get started with CPU. Now, this is a budget thing for sure, but believe it or not, this is a place where you can actually save money. What? I don't need a 5950X or a 12900K for gaming? Yeah, and with your budget of $150, that's just not realistic. CPUs like the 12600K or the 12400 or even the 12100 pack a lot of gaming performance and are very good at price. Also similar on the 5600X on the Ryzen side. Now I know there are some arguments around gaming taking advantage of more multi-core processing and blah, 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 blah. But here's the deal. In the long run, it really won't matter for years. Single core performance is going to be the standard for years and years to come until the majority of the gaming population has machines that make it meaningful. As someone who was a game developer for 20 years, that is a massive rewrite to engines and most folks just aren't gonna do that anytime soon. Now, I am going to be going off of current gen hardware. Sorry, can't have this video be like a bajillion days long. So 12th gen Intel and 5000 series Ryzen are gonna be kind of the focus. But to be honest, this sheet holds true for 11th gen and even 10th gen Intel, as well as 3000 series and whatever the heck they're gonna call the next series of Ryzen, whether that's 7000 or 9000 or 2000 or whatever it was. So given all of that, here's a little cheat sheet for you when choosing your CPU. For 1080p on the Intel side, 12400 and up, and then on the AMD Ryzen side, the 5600X and up. Now I have heard from my tech specialist that the 12100 is also a good option for 1080p gaming. I haven't had the opportunity to try it, so we didn't wanna do something or provide something or say to use something that we haven't actually tested. 
for 1440p, 12600 and up, and 5600X and up. Yes, the 5600X is still a great 1440p CPU. And then finally for 4K, 12700K and up, and the 5900X and up. Now I know the CPU getting bigger as the resolution goes up may seem counterintuitive as the workload on the GPU gets more and the CPU gets less, but the handoff between the CPU and GPU actually gets more complicated and larger. So to ensure things continue to run smooth and both are running at peak performance for not only games, but everything else you're gonna do on a PC when you're running at a higher resolution monitor, it makes sense to run a more powerful CPU. This is especially true for people who are running 4K. Honestly, that means that more than likely you're doing a lot of other things, not just gaming, and having that higher end CPU is going to save you a lot of pain. Now, let's talk about GPU. Ah, the graphics card. There was a day when this was just a figment of the imagination and people dreamed of holding these in their grubby little hands. But those days are past and you can actually get these at MSRP without too much trouble nowadays. Now, before I launch off to my diatribe about how MSRP is not NVIDIA MSRP, understand that prices have changed, folks. And if you wanna still chase the unicorn that is a Founders Edition 3000 series card, go ahead. But it is actually pretty easy to get a card at the manufactured suggested retail price for the partner cards today. And yes, it's more than what they were in 2019 and 2020. Anyway, now that we're off of Fantasy Island, let's talk about picking a GPU. First question, big one I'm always gonna get, AMD or NVIDIA. Sorry AMD folks, but it's still gonna be NVIDIA here. You can see from the numerous GPU builds that we have done from time to time, right here on Robitech, we still have issues with drivers and frankly with prices. Now I know you are like, Roby, you just got finished doing your whole diatribe on the prices and those are the prices. Yeah, but when I take the value of what you get from Nvidia for the price versus the value of what you get for AMD for the price and the fact that you can pretty much get both of them at MSRP now, then I have to go with Nvidia still. I can agree that prices on AMD GPUs, especially the 6800 series and 6900 XT, are better and even lower than a 3080 or even a 3090. But every time we test them on the newest games, they underperform. They, AMD, take longer to fix driver issues and they still don't have a really great answer for things like Invec, which affects the streaming side of this whole configuration thing. Also, as cool as FSR is, it is not adopted at the same level. Now, I do not think this is gonna stay this way. In fact, I am loving my One X player powered by my AMD Radeon APU and pairing it with games that use FSR. FSR, like DLSS, will be a game changer. It just needs more time, and I'm going to be singing the praises of AMD when it does. So, hopefully Team Red, stop throwing rocks. I will be on your side soon. Just, just not right now. But regardless, I will put in our little cheat sheet, the AMD choice if you wanna go Team Red because you're good enough and you're smart enough and gosh darn it, people like you. So here's the list. For 1080p gaming on Team Green, the 3050 and up, and on Team Red, the 6600 and up. 1080p gaming and streaming, it's a little bit different here. 3060 Ti and up, you wanna think about 10% loss in frames, which is about the performance difference between a 3060 and a 3060 Ti. And for AMD, you're gonna be CPU pounds, given that we don't have that NVEC answer. So as long as you're using like a 5600X or a 12600K or 12600, you're gonna be absolutely fine. For 1440p, gaming 3070, and up to a 6700 on the AMD side. For streaming here, both of these are solid cards as long as you're pairing the AMD up with a good CPU, like a 5600 or a 12600, like the previous one. 4K gaming, 3080 Ti, and up to a 6900X. Why not a 3080? Well, because honestly, unless you are playing all DLSS titles, the 3080 is just kind of borderline. It's really like a super 1440p card, in my opinion. 3080 Ti is just that much better. And if you're honestly paying for a high-end rig, the extra cost to jump here shouldn't be that big of a deal. Now, if you wanted to save a little and do a 3080 12 gig, then that may be okay. We've been surprised by the power of these cards and those extra percentage points of performance do actually make a difference when it comes to 4K. Also, streaming and gaming at 4K. Honestly, I would use a 3090 just to ensure you have the headroom to keep well north of solid frame rates. For PSU, <sighs> Now, if you've been watching TechTube for any amount of time, you've heard that this is one of the most ignored portions of the PC build. It's like the kid being picked at the end of dodgeball. No one is really expecting much and thus the poor child sits there sad and alone until some team takes pity on the poor soul and finally calls out his name. Usually exasperated that the kid named Justin needs to be on the team at all. 
even though Justin has been working on his throwing arm for months and knows the five Ds of dodgeball and has a Patrick O'Houlihan jersey. No one picks him. Okay, well, unlike that illustration that has nothing to do with me, that kid you picked last actually has the potential to kill you and all of your friends and holds the keys to you winning. See, that's why when you have your GPU and CPU combo, the very next thing that you choose needs to be a PSU. Because unlike the other two components, this thing has the highest chance of frying your system and breaking your build. So spend some money here. Now at some point, I'll be releasing a dedicated video about PSU and PSU efficiency, but here's kind of a template to follow. You want at least a gold rated PSU from EVGA, G5, G6, and P series, either a Corsair RMX or Corsair AX, Be Quiet Straight Power, Asus Thor models, NZXT, and Seasonic Primes are all solid options and should find what you need in any of those ranges at the appropriate power mode. Model is important here, folks. Please ensure that you are looking at the series and models I am mentioning and not just the brand. This is not a time to save money because you aren't saving money if all of your parts get blowed up. Now, here comes the pairing. For a 3050 and 3060, and of course the AMD counterpart, 650 watts. For a 3060 Ti, 750 watts. For a 3070 and 3070 Ti, 850 watts. For a 3080 and 3080 Ti, 1000 watts. And for a 3090 and above, 1200 watts. Now I know this is counter to what you hear when people talk about builds, but as people have been using these cards more and more, the draw on what these cards actually can use is higher than anticipated. And there's even some preparation here for the 4000 series. The TLDR or too long didn't read version is that you're trying to use a load on these PSUs, a percentage of their power where it is at its most efficient. And in doing so, you're reducing the amount of heat, the power consumption, as well as the wear and tear on the PSU. These PSU pairings with any CPU setup for them is optimal. If you drop down, say for instance, you go from 1000 watts to 850 watts in a 3080 Ti, you're actually going to increase the wear and tear on your PSU. And in some cases may not have enough power, which can result in very weird symptoms that you'd have no idea are actually related to a PSU. Things like randomly getting blue screens or even having read errors on a hard drive. Just do yourself a favor. Spend the money and sleep soundly knowing that your little RGB beast has all it needs to perform when you need it to. Like the guy in The Verge that sleeps when he has his Livestrong bracelet knowing that he can't get any static discharge. Everyone wants that kind of piece. Oh, and one thing I do want to address before moving on. If you're going to be getting a 3050, 3060, and in some cases a 3060 Ti, don't go bonkers and buy something crazy. Get like an EVGA 3060 XC3 or an Asus Dual Card. You don't need to go buy a Strix 3050 or 3060 or even 3060 Ti. It becomes reasonable, I believe, at the 3070 Ti level and higher to start worrying about inking out the extra performance of some of these overclock headroom cards and the cooling they provide. But honestly, for the most of us, getting a good like 3080 XC3 from EVGA is awesome and saves us money in the good old wallet. Okay, so let's talk about motherboard. Here's where I'm gonna make some PC kitties mad. But like I said, I have built hundreds of PCs, all with varying specs and types and run hundreds of tests with commissions in the fields. And one of the biggest issues is motherboards and the software surrounding them. So when choosing a motherboard, I would suggest Asus, MSI, or EVGA. We have had a number of issues with ASRock and Aorus slash Gigabyte, though Gigabyte less so than Aorus. Yes, I know they're the same brand, but honestly, that Aorus performance thing, we've just had a ton of issues with their MOBOs. Also, unless there is something you desperately need off of X570 or Z690, then I would suggest going with B550 for AMD or B560 for Intel, as you get most of the same things for a fraction of the cost and are still getting fantastic boards. Though it is important to note that B series of Intel motherboards don't allow you to overclock. So Z690, especially if you plan on using the K model of any of your Intel CPUs, may be the best option if you plan on pushing it a little bit later. Maybe a little education for your overclocking. Now Asus RG Strix are some of our favorites and you will see them featured on many other creators like Jay's Two Cents, Paul, and Bitwin. My favorite bang for the buck board though is the Tomahawk series from MSI and the Carbon series as well. MSI has been getting much better at the software side of things and it's been good to see, though lagging a lot still compared to Asus. If I were going pure performance, I would go with EVGA, especially if you plan on learning and improving your use of your PC over time. It 
overclocking, etc. Also, both ASUS and EVGA have great AI overclocking tools that get you 98% of what you could get if you overclocked on your own without any of the headache associated with it. Just remember that these are going to be on their Z690 and X570 boards and not on some of their more budget boards like the B550 or B560. Now, the last part of this whole motherboard section and what will create a nice transition over to memory here in a few minutes is going to be DDR5. Yeah, that's going to be a new for me. And here's the re-roll. Look, for gaming, DDR5 just isn't worth the price. Now, sure, if you wanna flex on folks on the internet or use it to try and help trap your next girlfriend or boyfriend when you pull up in your Bugatti Chiron filled with DDR5 dims and you're like, hey baby, then go for it. But let's be honest, most of us are driving like Honda Accords or aesthetically modded Subarus and can't really afford the real engine upgrades. So budget matters and that's why you get a MOBO. Make sure it's DDR4 unless you really have a secondary use for DDR5 that isn't gaining. Pretty sure no one on Love is Blind or The Bachelor was about to score their life partner by touting their Corsair Dominator DDR5 Platinum. Though, hey, maybe you could be the first. Memories like the ones I used to know. DDR5 memories and the RAM come before. Let's go and burn my money. Okay, wait, let's not. 32 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz RAM. 2x16 or 4x8, RGB or not, your call. It's kinda just that simple. If you wanna save some money, you could go 16 gigabytes, but stick with 3600 megahertz for both Intel and AMD, and you're pretty much fine. Whatever you do, make sure you get at least two sticks of RAM to make sure you're getting the benefits of dual channel. Unlike speed, this can actually make a big difference. In fact, check out our tough gaming laptop and see how much it improved frame rate just by upgrading that RAM. If you're going to be using a lot of Corsair parts like cooler PSU case, then get Corsair branded RAM. If you aren't, then G-Skill. Now for Intel, outside of choosing RAM that's specifically for AMD, the choice and compatibility is pretty dang easy. Pretty much most things work. For AMD, both Corsair and G-Skill have specific RAM brands, G-Skill, Triton Z, Neo, for AMD or Vengeance RGP RT are both specifically built for Ryzen and give you a very high chance of compatibility. Now you will need to set your XMP or DOCP profile in the BIOS after you get your PC built. To be clear, there is no 100% guarantee that you're going to get those settings to work. There is a very high percentage, but it is absolutely not guaranteed. Obviously the more money you pay for the motherboard and all in all buying specific branded RAM, increases their chances. And if you're going to be buying four DIMMs of RAM, then buy them as four by eight and not two by eight times two. When bought together, you get a higher chance of all of them working at the desired speed. Now I'm not gonna get into it as this video is already long enough, but it is a thing. Like pineapple on pizza. You may not like it, but it is a thing, so stop crying. Now, if you didn't heed my warning about DDR5, then first, we do take donations because you got money to burn and also compatibility is actually less of an issue given all of the control and the memory is on the DIMMs themselves. So even with Ryzen releasing later on, supporting DDR5, choosing DDR5 kits is actually pretty easy. Just go with the speed that you want and light your money on fire. Just make sure you film it because maybe you could be a YouTube star. Let's talk case. First off, you're probably gonna choose the Lian Lee 011 Dynamic. So why do I even bother? My budget Roby is $500 and I wanna use 011 Dynamic and spend $300 on RGB lit fans. So what CPU and GPU can I get for $200, Roby? What? You suck, Roby. MSRP is a lie. You don't know anything. Anyway, there are two camps here. One, those who will blow all their cash on parts and then search for whatever case they can get for $999 that won't cut off their fingers. And then there's the other side that starts with a case and adds all the RGB to it and says, what part can I get for $9.99 but run Call of Duty Warzone at 360 frames per second? Truth be told, case is actually pretty important for performance. And we have had a bit of a renaissance since the whole time of COVID and ended up with some pretty great case choices to choose from. So for this one, I'm gonna give you some great case recommendations and you can use these as kind of a place to get started. I mean, you aren't gonna listen to me anyway, but hey, you're entertained and you made it this far. Seriously, if you are entertained and wanna see more videos like this, then make sure you like and subscribe, especially if you wanna see more awesome time wasters like this that also impart invaluable information and knowledge that one day may change your life. Okay, so back to the video. My favorite budget case is the Fantex P368. It's easy to build in, it fits ATX down to mini ITX, and it comes with RGB fans and a cool RGB line 
like a racing stripe, so you already know you're gonna get a bajillion extra frames. You have other options in the budget area, the Cooler Master MB311L ARGB Airflow. It's micro ATX only, so something to be aware of, but again, great airflow, and what you get for the cost plus build experience is also really good. Now, mid-tier options. Here's a variety of options at different price points. You've got the Corsair 4000D Airflow, the Corsair 5000D Airflow, the Fantex P500A, the Cooler Master Masterbox TD500, and the Lee and Lee Land Cool 2 Mesh. When you talk about your high tier options, you're looking at the Lee and Lee Owen one Dynamic, the Dynamic Evo, and the Dynamic XL, the Corsair 5000T, and the Cooler Master HAF 700 Evo. Now I know people are going to be like, price of the Dynamic is similar to the 5000D, Roby, why is it high tier? Because you're gonna be putting nine fans in the dang thing, which ups the cost of $400 for most of the ones I've seen. Come on, you know that you're gonna be using the Uni 120 fans. So given that extra cost, just to make it look right, it's kind of a higher tier case. Now, we got some options for SFF builds or small form factor. And these are really great, like the SSUPD Meshalicious, the NR200P Max, the Height Revolt 3, and the NZXT H1 and Dan A4 line of cases are all really good. Now, Mini ITX is a whole other beast. Definitely would recommend checking out some of our other videos if you wanna just pop in there and see how to make these things because they just take a little bit more patience. If you're doing this and you're, this is your first part picker build, Good luck, you're in for a challenge. Now finally, a great starting point for airflow case. If you just wanna make an awesome air-cooled system is the Fractal Torrent line of cases. They are made from the breath of the gods and have a plus 10 to airflow if they were a D&D weapon. Seriously, these are incredible cases for airflow and built to really get the most out of air-cooled builds. Oh, and they look really, really good. So maybe you could use them to like attract your next mate or intimidate your neighbor next door. Okay, so we got GPU, CPU, PSU, RAM, case. What are we missing? Oh, that's right, cooling. Okay, so for all of the cases minus the budget ones, they in fact fit a 360 millimeter AIO. So pretty much just go get a 360 millimeter AIO, done. Okay, fine, you want more than that. And for real, you shouldn't cool like a 12100 or 12400 or even a 12600K with an AIO, though you could do it with a 240 millimeter AIO and that would be fine, if not a little overkill. So recommendation for those are really either the budget option of the Cooler Master Hyper 212, or if you wanna get something more quality, do like the Noctua NHU-12S for up to a 12600K or a 5600X. Now, when we're talking about a 5800X or an i7 or higher, then looking at an AIO at 360 millimeters is a great option. Now, if you wanna save money, you could do that and still get a 360 millimeter AIO. That's right, I'm thinking about that. Like the EVGA CLC 360, it's a great no-nonsense, no-frill, just good cooling 360 millimeter AIO. Want to get all the bling? Then get the Corsair H150i Elite LCD or the NZXT Z73. You want middle of the road? Look at the H150i Capellix or the Fantex 360 Glacial. If you want to do push and pull and really just cool the heck out of the white dwarf of a 12900K, then use the EK AIO Elite 360 millimeter that has six fans and all the trimmings for a push pull in that Corsair 5000D. Now you should always have a rule of thumb Pick the biggest AIO your case supports, and you should never get a case that doesn't support a 360 millimeter AIO. So there you go. Unless you're doing like a thousand dollar build, then just follow our step-by-step -step guides, which we just released right here. And they use the air coolers I talked about earlier. Now for air cooling, it's a bit more nuanced. So if you want a more in-depth on air cooling basics, check out our video right here. This will help you with choosing an air cooler that's right for you and your PC part picker list. Also, we also have a video completely on AIOs and water cooling and all that sort of stuff. So you want something more non-standard like a bottom mounted AIO, we can also help you with that. That video is right here. Okay, now for some final imparts of knowledge as we head off into the sunset and hopefully make you that much more successful at the world of PC part picking. Yeehaw! Now, when you're choosing parts, try not to mix brands too much. Remember, as cool as all the hardware is, you need software to control it, and that means software side of things for RGB, etc. So try to keep as many things you can in the same world, which would be very helpful. That way you get to only install one, or maybe at most two programs to control things versus five different things, and then your PC runs like absolute trash because it's bogged down by RGB apps. So buy an Asus motherboard, an Asus GPU, 
buy Corsair cooler, Corsair Ram, Cors you know, exactly. It's like, keep it all together as much as you possibly can. Yes, we're all still praying for that unified RGB controller, but just like the Jackalope, just hoping to have one as a pet isn't gonna really make it more real for anybody. Trust me, I have tried. Now, unfortunately, RGB case fans kind of suck. Just to make things easy for you, the Uni120 fans from Lee and Lee, not the, not the ALs, the SLs, the EK Varder fans from EK Waterblock, and the LL120s are all good choices. However, if you want to get RGB and not sacrifice power, you could do the Fantex Halos that go on top of the fans and then pair those with something like the Noctua NFF12s for your radiator and the Noctua NFA12s for your airflow if you want to have your cake and eat it too. Finally, down below, we gave you some templates in the description to get you started for budget, mid-tier, and high-end systems, both Intel and AMD, so you can customize the rest the way you want to, to your heart's content. Now, we wanted to give you a good starting point from a Robitech approved list, if possible. So, what did you think of this video? Tell us, and maybe you can win some cash in the process. First and foremost, we need you to leave a quality comment down below, along with liking and subscribing to the channel. That's, you gotta do that to be eligible. Now, when I say quality comment, it doesn't need to be something positive. We're not paying for positivity. We're paying for feedback. So something you liked or didn't like about the video, that's okay. What surprised you, etc. Some sort of feedback. This is how we get better. Just not, I deserve to win, Roby. Can I has a free PC or something similarly just terrible? We also need to ensure that we have a way to reach you in your YouTube profile, like your email. So please put your email there so we can email you if you want because we will be giving away $25 to one lucky comment below, and this is worldwide as long as you can accept PayPal or Venmo. We choose winners every two weeks after a video has released. So did you like the video? Was the information helpful? Was I too snarky? Was it in-depth enough for you or was it not in-depth enough for you? What could have made it better? We would love to know all of that in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video right here on Robitech. Did you know we have a live stream channel for special builds and events? Well, check out Robitech Live down in the description below so you can like and subscribe and know when we actually go live with these live builds, which you get linked to all the time. Have a question about the case or any of these other PC part picking questions? Then check out our amazing Discord server filled with other tech and PC enthusiasts that love to share their thoughts and ideas on all of these very subjects. In fact, huge shout out to our tech specialist there who made sure that I fact checked this before I ended up recording it. Are you looking for cheap tech? Then check out at robytechdeals.com or at robytechdeals on Twitter, where you can find our guy Tom scouring the internet for the best deals on all things tech, from PC components to gamings to TVs. Finally, you can also follow me and my entire team on all the other socials at Robitech everywhere, even on the TikToks. We hope you enjoyed this video. We'd love to see your feedback and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.